Welcome back to the Revival Podcast. So now you see our faces. This is what we look like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry about this awkwardness. Basically, we were meant to have good audio and all that kind of stuff because we got our new equipment recently. Yeah. And everything changed when the coronavirus attacked. Yep. Yeah, everything so, changed. Literally. So basically, we're in three different places now. I'm pretty much four hours away. I'm in Ireland. The other two guys are in Bulgaria, but they haven't left their houses in probably like two weeks. So yeah. isolation. Yeah. yeah. So everyone's in isolation and... And yeah, we thought, why not? Let's do a new podcast like this. So here we are. Got to adapt to the times. Exactly. So yes, welcome back to the Revival Podcast. Rahul here. Dennis. (laughs) Why is it so awkward? Yeah, usually this is not awkward because we can see each other and predict stuff. But Mm. all right. So Mm. today's topic is a nice one, in my opinion. Mm. We're going to be it's talking interesting, about, for sure. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be talking about ministry and what's it like for us to be ministering and studying in Bulgaria and that kind of sort of thing. So it's just going to be a just chill episode, just casual. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Dennis, why don't you start us off? What is ministry, bro? Okay. So, okay. Ministry is like an activity that is carried out by Christians to... I guess, express or, and essentially spread their faith. It's like carrying forth Christ's mission in the world. And it's like, it's almost a responsibility that Christians are given during baptism. So, okay. So could you give an example of a saint or an activity that would be like that of ministry? I mean, one of our topics will, there's different forms of ministry. There's mm-hmm. music ministry, there's media ministry, there's uh, skit ministry, there's all kinds of ministry. Mm, okay, yeah. Um, before we get into the forms, really quickly, Matthew uh, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20 says like this, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things, that I have commanded you. Basically, I think we can agree that's basically ministry. Just a summarized definition of ministry. Exactly. Right. Now, yeah. in Varna, what kind of ministries do we have in Varna and Pleven, Jenny? So, um, in Varna and Pleven, we have a couple of ministries, and we are all part of those ministries. For example, we have the media ministry, and we have the music ministry, we have the intercession ministry. We have the finance ministry. We also have um, other smaller ministries like the food ministry. Um, and I think we're also developing like different, yeah, we're also developing different um, ministry, like Dennis said. <laughs> yeah, like the skit ministry, which yeah, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, mentioning skits, uh, we are very sorry for the podcast promo we released. <laughs> Actually, oh, sorry. I'm not yeah. apologizing for that anyway. We're not <laughs> bloody, we love that, we, that <laughs> recording was the best. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a quick shout out to our editor, Joel, my friend, mm-hmm. working so hard for the last two videos. He is a lifesaver. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. bro. So now, different ministries. Let's go. Media ministry. What is media ministry? Right. Well. Apparently, I'm meant to be the coordinate, one of the coordinators of media ministry, so Apparently. I really should be able to answer this. Yeah, you should. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, media ministry. Most of our most of our social interactions are online nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's on social platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. So something like the media ministry is quite necessary if we want to reach as many people as humanly possible. Yeah. And the easiest way to do that is through social media platforms. And so that's what we essentially do. We sometimes release words of God, um, sometimes release Bible verses, just like putting on our stories. We sometimes release videos, sometimes just promoting, for example, the podcast, or we um, promote stuff like upcoming retreats, things that are happening over there, around the world, any like certain invitations by the Pope, stuff like that. For example, we had the 
will be at all be blessing. That's that's mm -hmm. today, isn't it? That's today. Yeah, is. yeah. That is literally that's in three hours. Yeah, that's that. So yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. Huh, okay. So you said you were a coordinator, right? Of one of the coordinators of media ministry. Yeah. How do you like what how do you feel as in um how do how does it how do you think it made you grow as a person and as a uh, you know a follower of Jesus just being given that responsibility or like learning new things in that responsibility I'm not going to lie to you me being the media ministry coordinator is not I've never really supported this idea people wanted me to so I said yes but I only got Instagram when did I get Instagram I think it was five months ago that was the first time I got Instagram I was a 20 year old <laughs> and I got Facebook when I was 19 again just I'm a grandpa when it comes to this. So I had a steep learning curve. I had to learn a lot of things quite quickly. And yeah, I mean, understanding about how social media works, at least in a little bit, that helps because, again, it just makes it easier to reach as many people as possible. Spread the message and spreading the message in a certain format that people will actually respond to. Because if you put in long paragraphs on a story, no one's reading that. You need to make it short, snappy, deliver the information, and then get out of there. So that helped me kind of condense my information, just putting out the most important bits and just getting the message out there in the most efficient way possible. Fresh. Fresh. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so then we have music ministry, mm. which myself and Jenny were both part of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, um, I think Jenny, you should speak about that, not me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I think music ministry, there are quite a few people in it because everyone is, has a talent to either yeah. play an instrument yeah. or sing or something to do musically. Mm -hmm. So quite a few people are involved in music ministry. And I think it's a really good way of using the talents that you normally have or you acquire, or you've started learning as a young child to use it for God. And yeah, it, it's, and it's useful as well because we have masses, we, you know, every week, at least one mass we have. And so there we have the choir. So they're also part of the music ministry. And yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's also a really good way to get closer to God because singing has more effect than prayer. We've all heard that you know, over and over singing, again. Yes. Singing is twice praying. Yeah. Yeah. Twice. So yeah. When we, do it, when we do it, it's 10 times, but still. Well, <laughs> yeah. I rest my yeah. kids. <laughs> stay humble. Stay humble, guys. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so b you've been part of the music ministry for quite some time now. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. How has that made you grow as a person? Like, or as a follower of Jesus, that experience? Um, I think it's taught me more about discipline and responsibility because um, everyone in the music ministry is responsible for something. And once you have that responsibility, you cannot go back. Yeah. And you can't, you can't just think, Oh, it's okay. It's fine. Someone it's just, else will do it. you know, yeah, someone else will do it. No one else will do it. You no. have to do it. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's your responsibility to, you know, be part. It's, it's, it's a huge, it's kind of a huge um, machine that everyone is a part of. Mm. So if you do your part, the whole system's just gonna disintegrate, I would say. Yeah. That makes sense. What so, has being part of the music ministry taught you, Rahul? Part of the music <laughs> ministry. Okay, geez, okay. Um, I was not expecting that rebound, but okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've been part of different music ministries. Mm -hmm. yeah and, uh, you have more of an experience than i do because i came to varna and that's when i was part of yeah a ministry. i had a little bit of experience i'm not gonna say a lot yeah. i had a little bit of experience more than me more than me okay mm -hmm. uh ministering before i came to varna because i'm a part of jesus youth mm -hmm. um what music ministry has taught me is praying like there, it's, there's not just one way to pray like saying prayers or going hallelujah hallelujah that's not the only way to pray like singing or like playing like keyboard so i can play the keyboard and when i play like at first i did i to be honest i did it so i can play on stage or like when i was learning it to like 
show off mm-hmm. pretty much. Yeah. But then once I encountered God, I made a decision that like, okay, you know, what? if I'm going to use my talents, I'm going to only use it for him. Because the only thing I can do realistically is play keyboard. I can't do anything else. <laughs> so for me, it's like, it's my form of praying when I play a song during a retreat or when I'm, you know, creating that atmosphere of prayer. Like it's me praying. I'm interested for everyone listening. I'm asking for God's mercy and I'm asking for God's mercy on me. Who's playing. Cause it'll seem hypocritical if I don't do that and just play. Yeah. But yeah, so we also have an intercession ministry. So what they do is basically they say they basically gather prayer. They intercede for different aspects of the ministry in Varna, the ministry in UK, the ministry in Ireland, the ministry around the world. So it could, right now we're praying lots for coronavirus. So we, we raise almost 100, 200 Hail Marys or DMCs, Divine Mercy Chaplets, for the coronavirus over the recent days, trying to just get prayers built up and hope everyone's, excuse me, is okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have finance ministry. None of us are part of that, so we don't know really what goes on there. But I'm it's guessing... The practical, it's the most practical part yeah. of ministry. I've ever learned. It's not suitable for us. <laughs> you know <laughs> maths. You know yeah, maths. Exactly. We're not that nope. good. <laughs> anyway, and then we also have a food ministry. <laughs> I didn't... Wow. Yeah, we have a food ministry. <laughs> Basically, food ministry is in charge of getting all the food, all the stuff we need for the retreats. Because Retreat, we do yeah. give like lunches and tea and stuff for the retreat. Yeah. So they're in charge of telling the finance ministry how much they need money-wise or how much we need to raise from the coordinators or the organizers and how much we need to donate. That kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, so that's pretty much ministry in Ryan, I guess. So yeah. hopping on from that, do you know the way we, as ministers, we get judged quite a lot? As in whatever we do, we're always being judged because we, you know, we're a living representation of Jesus, a walking representation. Mm. So there's always that misconception of, um, you know, being a Catholic or being a Christian means that you can't have fun or you're like a monk and a nun, Mm. you know, social isolation (laughs) <laughs> everyone's doing that now yeah. so. sorry that was a silent joke right. it did not work <laughs> social distancing that kind of stuff what do you guys want to say about that I think everyone's definition of fun is very different so mm-hmm. for some people um, I don't know any examples but doing certain things would be fun but I would find it you know a bit too much on my mind so I'm sure we all, like normal human beings, do things that we consider are fun, right? Yeah. 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 But it's just a bit different. I think our lives, without doubt, is a bit different compared to normal, like not normal, compared to some other teenagers or young adults. In what way would you say it's different? Um, like, okay, so we take a normal teenager that hasn't encountered God on one side. And we have Jennifer on another side. What would be the main difference between them? Well, I think as, okay, my age and my, um, the group of friends I'm with, or, you know, I have to encounter the people my age. I think I'm a bit more aware because I know I I don't want to do anything that would make God sad. You know, I I always think about it. I'm like, can I, can I tell god about this can i talk to god about this will he be okay about this because he is my father and i think i should be you know responsible for my actions and i should be responsible for what i can and cannot do and if i can't do something and say oh it's fine it's okay god god's gonna be fine with it then i'll do it Mm, yeah but so i think that awareness is there within me Okay, so it, the I'm from what you said, I'm gonna say that the main difference would be that we try to invite 
Jesus or God into the smallest things we do. Yeah, in whatever you do. What I, like if we're waking up, thanks God, or uh, as Dennis once said it, playing uh, worship songs at a gym, empty gym, at like 12. <laughs> like, yeah, those, yeah, or like even when we're making coffee, again, another Dennis example, saying, God, <laughs> help me put sugar instead of salt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like it's, 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 small it's always the small things. I mean, like we're talking about differences, but like between people who haven't discovered God and people who have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's not. The rules have changed suddenly. Back when I didn't really know God, I had morals. I had <laughs> things that I would do, things that I wouldn't do. Yeah, and those were governed by what I thought was right and wrong. I didn't really have. Like a, it was my moral compass. I didn't really yeah. base it on anything. Yeah. It was just my personal feeling. Things that I w- considered wrong, I wouldn't do. Things that I considered right, I would do. But when I discovered God, I suddenly had someone else to calibrate my moral compass. Suddenly mm-hmm. things that were right before, suddenly I, I kind of realized, okay, maybe not the best kind of thing for me right now. Mm-hmm. They're not, the, not going to help me with my faith kind of thing so the i think my main change is the rules that i set myself have changed they're mm-hmm. different now they, they've been modified not in such a way that i'm a monk right now just in such a way that it's more directed towards my faith if it increases my faith i'll go for it if it doesn't then i'll be a bit more hesitant kind of thing yeah like yeah we do like our occasional fun and our occasional comedy yeah yeah we like our fun like we do go to the movies we do watch random nonsense on youtube we are normal so much nonsense on youtube yeah (laughs) exactly rabbit (laughs) normal as can be (laughs) yeah but the the difference is both of them said is we try to no we try to invite god into smallest things we do so even in this podcast, the first thing I said when both of them turned up on the screen was, did you guys pray? Because <laughs> we yeah. know, like, because we've been facing so many issues with recording the podcast. Like, we were meant to have up to June recorded by two weeks ago. Yeah. And small, small things kept blocking our way. And, like, now we're here. Still no preparation. We're still just not, – not preparation. No – no idea of when the next podcast recording is going to be or if we're going to have a podcast like face to face anytime so june yeah. you know like so i'm going to kunyu like those small small things it makes a difference yeah yes yeah, so we do like our fun and we do like our banter for anyone that's wondering we are not robots I can watch movies all day long, honestly. <laughs> we could just, literally, we could spend a whole day waking up, watching movies, and doing nothing. Yeah. And we'll just, just like everyone else now. Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll probably end the whole day by just saying a quick prayer. That's the part that we're different, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, here in Varna, as ministers, we've, three of us have ministered in different mm-hmm. ways and we've had five retreats here so far oh, yeah. yeah five uh, six technically we weren't here for one of them yeah so yeah. the first one that we were here we were all i think all three of us were participants called ignite happened mm-hmm. in november 2018 yep. then we had flare which happened in march 2019 we had Abide, which happened in April 2019 in Pleven, not in Varna. We had Restore, that happened in November, October, November this year, or 2019. Uh, we had Abide, or not Abide, sorry, Unite, the mission we did in Plovdiv. Yeah. In December 2019. And we're having an upcoming retreat that we don't know what's going to happen. Called Encounter. Yeah. So we've we've done different ways of ministering in each of them. We we did like me and Jenny were part of music ministry for most of them, but we were helping out with other ministries as well. 
Dennis was all around helping any ministry that needed help. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, what was the difference when you were in participant in Ignite to when you first started volunteering for Flare or for um, Restore? Well, I think the main, I think it kind of, it didn't really click until I was standing out in front of everyone else with a, with a few other people about to do an action song. <laughs> yeah. It, it then Always it the clicked, action like, song. <laughs> yeah, like like yeah. my freaking lighthouse. Like what? <laughs> and like, as I was doing that, I was realizing, what am I doing? Like what? Because <laughs> usually I'm so used to seeing other people doing this and just like trying to reluctantly join along. And here I am standing in front of everyone else <laughs> going for that. <laughs> like, yes, let's do this. As ballet yeah. move. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was, <laughs> it was very different. It was because I wasn't, most people are like, I just sit in the audience and listen to what the preacher is saying and I take it in. But this was very different being actually part of it, being like actually participating in it. Yeah. It was a, it was a bit of an eye opener kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. What do you think, I think it, I think it's different when you participate and when you're part of, the, you know, coordinating program because you when you're part of the program, like to what what should we do? How much time do we have? I think it take like you realize the responsibility and that there's more to it than you would think. Oh yeah, I was like I remember when I like okay we're Indians we're Catholic Indians. So that means we have went to at least 20, 30 different retreats over the span yeah. of a small 10, 20 years. Yeah. yeah. And all of those retreats, I was, I always look at the Chetans and Chetis or even kids younger than me or my age of like, what are you doing? You weirdos. <laughs> I've always said that. I'm like, mm. are you mental? Just making your, like, you know, making a fool of yourself in front of people mm. and then boom the christ <laughs> the encounter with god <laughs> yeah. and then you realize then when you go to your first retreat after you encounter him and you're going as a volunteer and you realize so this is why they do it the joy the freedom the peace they get mm. like mm. it's a big difference like in ignite i remember being a participant and like the first retreat, i was a first year and I was just like, oh, meh. And then the next year. Let's see what this is about. Yeah, yeah, let's see what, I mean, I went there. I was like, I'm like, I already had my God experience. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to participate. I'm just like, you know, there's a ministry here. Fine. There's no need for me to get involved as such. Three months down the line from November to in March, I'm doing music coordination for the retreat. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> Like organizing practices, organizing the songs, fixing the scales. Oh my days. I was like, man. a lot of practice goes behind all of that. Like a practice, lot of prayers, yeah. so much goes behind it. Like huge amounts of content goes behind it. Like, And I also think when Dennis was talking about coming in front of people, it also gives a sense of confidence because mm. you're dancing in front of people and, you know, they're all looking at you. They're all just like. What's he doing? What's she doing? You, you know, weirdo. <laughs> I remember the last retreat, I had to um, choreograph a dance oh. and I didn't even know that I had the ability to do any of that. Yeah. And then it was just like for every, every time that song came on, I was like, okay, it's my turn now. I got to go do this. And the so thing, the thing was, yeah. we put that everywhere. That one dance is like streets, inside, outside, uh, yeah. everywhere. <laughs> I was like, okay, again, let's do this. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. I low-key hate that song. It was stuck in my head for two yeah, months. I swear, it was stuck, but it was stuck like, in it your was head. Just... It was catchy. <laughs> oh, I did. Wow. Yo, but, yeah. at, least, at least it's not like me making an overuse of Yes, Lord. Oh. You love that song, though. So yeah, I, love that I love that song. I love, <laughs> I love that song so much, I actually somehow managed to do an entire praise and worship during a retreat just using Yes, Lord. Wow. Yeah, yeah that, that was, <laughs> I, was, I, was banned, that. I was banned from using Yes Lord for a year. Mm. Anyway, and then this December, we did our, we, or, not organized it, 
uh, well, organized, read, preached at our first mm. retreat that we've done on our own, the Unite Mission in Plovdiv. Oh, yeah. So Dennis was in charge of the activity. Jenny was mm. one of the people in charge of music ministry. And I was also there. Yeah. And also so, intercession. While and intercession. All of us were interceding. So every, like, if you're free, you, you don't sit around. Straight to adoration, pray. Yeah. It was yeah. that kind of rotation. So how did that different experience of preaching? So you, we usually see like Joe's brother, Rini Chechi, um, Sara Mandi, all of them preaching and doing the activity. How did it feel to be one of them, you know, to be doing the main stuff? I'm not even going to try and compare myself to those guys. Like, <laughs> Don't compare no. yourself. How did you <laughs> feel <laughs> to be doing <laughs> them? <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Yeah. It was, again, another step up kind of thing. Very surreal. Because, again, you're standing up there where you're used to seeing others stand up. And I was making them do activities that they, I'm pretty sure that no one wanted to do. It was, we had, I basically split them up into groups and everyone had to do a skit yeah, on uh, situations that they face as Christians in the real world. Yeah, I remember that. I, I can tell. Not a single person wanted to do it. And not even the volunteers. Let actually, me just say, not even the volunteers wanted to do it. Whoa, yeah, whoa, like, oh. <laughs> but, you know, I take pleasure. In, I, I, I like making people do things. It's fun. Nice. But <laughs> yeah, like, it was, again, this is very surreal. Like, I wasn't, I'm not going to lie to you. If anyone asked me five months ago, if, you know, oh, yeah, mate, you thinking of standing up there in front of people and getting them to do an activity for a retreat? Yeah. Buzz off. <laughs> you know, that would just, yeah, no. But, buddy, what are you talking about? <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Yeah. And Jenny was actually leading the music ministry there for mm. half of the day. So one half, it was Achen, and the second half was Jenny. Mm. How did you feel having the mic to yourself? Because usually Jenny, um, she avoids. I was surprised mic. people were. I was surprised people were ready to listen to what I wanted to sing. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That was basically yeah, and I I just I love singing for God. Mm. I it gives me so much joy, and just being part of a retreat and being able to not lead but kind of help everyone come together to just praise and worship God. I think yeah. it's just. A, a real feeling mm. i enjoyed it yeah i think the word that we're all connecting and using is surreal that mm. experience is like you feel things you've never felt before if that makes any sense yeah like so much peace so much love so much joy so much happiness all of it just flows into you it's like it's like yeah, and when the retreat is over kind of part of the <laughs> the retreat is over we are i i i mean i was genuinely sad i was like oh it's over yeah it was a one day thing but like we traveled so much for it so we traveled what well, uh we traveled these guys traveled overnight i was traveling with achin for the three days because he was going to three different cities so it was like constant so much effort and then getting back as well like these guys had took another overnight train we hmm. took a car midnight <laughs> Memories, yeah. Yeah, like these are the things we're treasuring forever. Like the things that happen, even the like the coldness of the Bali, I can still feel it. Oh, that was freezing. It, it, it's not a good was, thing. It was oh. crazy. It was, it was like cold. minus. We just, it was minus nine or something. Oh my god, Man, it was cold. Jeez, oh. I could barely concentrate. Yeah. Couldn't yeah. even fall asleep properly. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Man. yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much it, I guess. Like it's that surreal surreal yeah. experience that that's the reason why we keep doing this even this podcast we're not we like we started the podcast thinking you know what well, it'll be a good way to you know first of all we said it's a good way to reach out to young people because a lot of young people do listen to podcasts and then we did the first one we did the second one we did the third one now we're doing the fourth one each time we do it the only thing we're thinking of is you know this is actually so much fun we're not going to stop it let's keep going we're trying to plan out as many episodes as we can. Even though it does not look like it, we do plan episodes. Yeah. Like this episode was meant to be good quality. <laughs> good Clearly. Quality sound is meant to be, you know, so nice. We got our new equipment. <laughs> but God works in mysterious ways. But he still brought us together. That's the main yeah. thing. Anyway, so I guess that's it from us this week. Uh, announcements? Anything? 
Oh, if you want to be part of any ministry, please yeah. contact people who you know are in ministries already. Contact uh, any three of us. We're always free to talk. Or you can contact us, AFCYMBG, on Instagram. Hmm. Yeah. Um, any other well, announcement? Uh, yeah. The retreat, uh, May 1st to 3rd, it's still going ahead as far as we know, but it'll all depend on the travel ban and that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. keep Encounter and Dachin and Joel's brother, everyone in your prayers. Yeah. Yep. And if any one of you guys have... Oh, sorry, Dennis. No, 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 go for it. Go for it. You start. Go for it. Finish it. Um, if any one of you guys have any recommendations or any type of topic... Um, talk. Now we have more time. We can actually... Yeah. Talk about topics. You know, tell us about it. And if we are able to, we can have a session about it. Yeah. And if you guys want to join in with us and be a guest, mm-hmm. feel free now since everything is offline. Offline? Online? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Online. Yeah, Online. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so we're just going to wind up with a short prayer. Jenny, do you mind? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lord Jesus. As we come to the end of this podcast, Lord, we want to give um, honor to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us here today all together. The time that you've given us um, to talk about uh, the life as a minister and all the aspects about it. Lord, we pray that uh, you bless each and every person who's listening to this. Uh, We ask for your protection on them. Lord Jesus, we pray, especially for all those who are suffering from the virus that's going on now. Lord, we pray for all the uh, healthcare workers and all those who are working day and night to provide a safe environment for all of us. Lord Jesus, we ask this in the prayer saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this us day, day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. As we, As we forgive those, those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother of God, pray for us as now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. As it was at the beginning, is now, and of a shall be. World, world without end. Amen. Amen. So yeah, that's it from us, I guess. Uh, we'll yep. see you hopefully in two weeks, probably like this again. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, stay home, social distancing. Yep. Stay safe. Don't go outside. Dear Lord, don't be don't stupid. Go Guys, don't give, it, give it up. Give up the temptation to go outside. It's okay. We're, we're all in this together. Just... <laughs> don't make it worse. Yeah, editor, add the song right now. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> anyway, guys, oh, uh, <laughs> don't forget to subscribe down below and follow us on Instagram as well. I think that's until next time. Bye.